We got a little road trip today. We are headed to Miranda's upholstery. Got a phone call earlier. Loaded up my sons. We're waiting on one. Just leave it right there on the seat. They say our seats are done, so we're gonna go check them out and pick them up. Take you guys with me. Let's go check these things out. Alrighty guys, so check it out. We got Oxen Dark Brown. That's the color that we went with. We're out here at Miranda's Upholstery here on 122 Union here in Bakersfield. And check out what we got right here. I went with the two-tone with the brown with the, um, it's almost like a white or a really, really light silver to get that contrast. We're gonna get this insert also wrapped. Well, actually, we're gonna make it look like an insert because this is just a a factory reproduction um, one piece door panel. And we're gonna get this wrapped and make it look like it's an insert. So we're gonna come back for this. Um, I was kind of debating if I should paint this or get it wrapped, but now that I'm here looking at it, uh, we decided that we're gonna wrap it and then we're gonna mold this in to make it look like it's a, like a two-piece unit. We got our dash pad here. We went with the same design on the bottom side to match our, our bench seat here. We can check this out. I did go with the slight separation. So this is like a modern touch on a just a standard bench seat. So this is what I ended up deciding mm -hmm. with. This is the grain. Mm -hmm. It gives it that real, real leather, leather feel, leather look. We got the wind blowing on us real quick. Hopefully you guys can still hear me. And then this is our visors. Just a simple wrap. I did order a brand new set of um, uh, what would you call these sun visor brackets I got some chrome ones coming from brothers those will be coming soon I think uh, next week um, he kind of beat us to it but we are we are here nonetheless to pick this up so we can put our uh, we can put our cluster back in we can put our glove box back in these can wait until we get our brackets and then uh, our seat, we'll just have to put it off to the side for a little bit because I did contact the people of OC Auto Carpets and we have a carpet on its way. So um, I was not going to go carpet, but I came across these guys at OC and uh, I contact them and they said they can get me a carpet here in a week. That was a few days ago. So I think the carpet should be here probably tomorrow if not the following day but um this guy is really really busy and uh we need to make some space in here and we need to get our stuff out of here so got my sons here now we're gonna load this stuff up and we'll come back for this probably a day or so and uh again you guys can contact them if you're in the 661 area kern county uh he does have Instagram, he does have Facebook, and this is Miranda's upholstery. So check it out, this is just an idea. This is my take on something custom, on a budget, good material, and look at the results, man. I mean, I like it. I like it, I like it. So. We're going to load this stuff up, and we'll see you guys at home. All right, guys, we are back. We got the seat covered up for now because we are we don't need it. But uh, I also don't need it getting dirty. So I got that covered up for now. But let me show you what we got in here before I... I don't want to leave you guys too far behind. But uh, yesterday, I did kind of get on it again. And I started with the mounting of the speakers. And do not push these guys hard because, yeah, you get one of those. 
Now, I'm going to kick myself in the butt for a while for doing that, but you know what? That's, that's what happens when you start rushing things. And uh, I was kind of on go mode, you know, uh, installing the retro sound uh, amplifier here. This is uh, their 8 inch under the seat unit. Uh, was running that, running the power and everything. So, this is basic amp stuff. Um, power ground and uh your your remote wire that pretty much turns on the amp whenever you turn on the stereo so that's pretty self-explanatory stuff um i don't want to bore too many of you guys with that it's just real real basic wiring stuff um i did end up putting a splitter so i'm going to get all my power from here I'll get the amp power from here. I'll get the um, the air ride suspension power from here. And then we'll basically just tie this guy back in here to run it up to our starter. So that's going to be my solution for that. Um, we're still we're still not connected. But we start working on other things. Put our little trims back on. And... This guy here, it's pretty cool. This is just a 67, 68 horn button. That's what that is. I got the idea from a buddy of mine. It actually, uh, it actually fits right in the hole. I just barely put the speaker in right now. But honestly, uh, I just got a brand new um, rubber seal, rubber neck seal for, for one of these. Put that in there. And then this horn came also with like a small tube. Um, I'm pretty sure it like inserts into the to the horn, and it fits right in there. And it's it's in there snug. I mean, I haven't even it's not even attached really. I just pushed it in there, and it's stuck. So I'm pretty sure I could build something where I can like lock it in place from the backside with a nut. Maybe fabricate a little bracket with the flat bar or something and a nut but i mean that thing is on there so i think for now i'm just gonna run with it because it seems like that's what we're doing now we're just kind of running with things but i don't want to leave you guys too far behind this is on there that's on there that's on there uh okay here's another thing uh these um kick panel speakers that I'm running are these Pioneers. Uh, I just threw away the box, but I think I, I think I put it in uh, one of the unboxings a few videos ago. So um, you guys can kind of scroll back, but they did not fit. So I had, did have to order a spacer. Um, I found an aluminum spacer just because it, I don't know, kind of gives it that little bling bling. Um, Here's the one for the other side. So this is three quarter inch spacer and that fits perfectly. So if you do go with like an aftermarket speaker that's pretty deep, you are gonna have to run a spacer with these. Um, I'm sure they do sell speakers that are a little bit more shallow for stuff like that, but I didn't take that into consideration until when I went to put it in it doesn't fit it sticks out at least three quarters of an inch it sticks out i think a one inch would probably have been better but this is the one that i liked because it's um shiny they didn't have a, a one inch one they only had a three quarter inch one so it still fit perfect it's good this is going to be mounted now and then um i'm going to mount the other side and clean out some of this stuff right here i got a buddy who said that um He'd like to come over and give me a hand, so that's always good. Shout out to Antique Junkies. Um, he'll be here soon, so maybe I can have him help me on the on the box. We need to get these fenders taken out because we need to start cutting this. We need to cut this box part. But it's the tedious things that. I, like I, I need I need to do it, but I can't because I'm doing something else. So I got another another set of hands coming to give me a hand. So hopefully we can knock this out. 
Um, I did reach out to the people at OC Carp uh, OC Auto Carpets, and we do have a carpet coming soon. So I just want to have everything ready because I just I'm gonna disconnect this, and then the hole I'm gonna cut in the carpet will just be this one, and then this will just run and click right in. All these other wires, I have them ran against the firewall. You can see there comes across here a little uh, little cover trans cover runs alongside that and then right here splits and then speaker wires go that way and the speaker wires come this way up and under from the bottom to here and then uh, this is connected straight to here so everything else is just kind of it's just kind of here but we don't need it here anymore so we'll get rid of this stuff and we do have our dash our dash is in so I think we're gonna put our dash back in so we can put our cluster back in we can put our glove box back and have this kind of complete um, oh steering wheel we could work on the steering wheel <laughs> steering wheel yep 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 what else Sorry guys, I'm just thinking out loud right now. Our manifolds are dry. So we can do that. I did buy some new motor uh, motor mounts. Here, let me show you guys why I bought them. And which ones I bought. So I bought these right here. These are for small blocks, and uh, I think it also said on there that if you buy an adapter, you can also put these on an LS. So just by looking at it, I'm assuming this goes like this, but let me show you why I need something like this, or I should have this, because in order to make these headers fit that I'm running, I had to shave down the top hump of that motor mount now there's still plenty of metal on the side of that um, I don't think it should be an issue but nevertheless I think if I was to run these I would have way way more than enough clearance to to run um, these headers if I put these on there so that's another thing that we can do. Uh, it looks like there should be something that mounts to the motor. This looks like it mounts to the frame for sure. Something probably needs to come out of here. And check that box again or else we can't even put these on there. But yeah, I mean, besides the fact that they look cool. They are form and function. I do need them. Yeah, so I don't have anything other than this. And I just hear I heard a C10 pulling up, so my buddy's here. I'm gonna get the door open for him. And I'll introduce him here in a little bit once we start getting to work. And uh I'll cut you right back on. I'll be right there. Alrighty, alrighty. Let's see where we're at. Uh, this is actually the next day, so I don't want to repeat myself. But I did, however, get some parts in. So we got our steering column in by Boas Performance. Um, if you guys remember a few videos before, uh, the Boas Performance is what I'm actually running on the control arms tubular control arms in the front that is from them um i haven't opened this yet so we're gonna we're gonna check this out together uh i just recently sold today the steering column from speedway motors uh, i just wasn't gonna work the plug was a different plug like a newer gm type plug and it was more of a more of a universal copy unit which would have worked but I was looking for something that I could kind of throw in there a little bit faster. Something more like a bolt-in. 
type of deal something that already came uh the other one didn't have the neutral safety switch i believe this one does i hope it does it looked like it did and it said it in the picture so let's check this one out okay so it looks like this one comes with this style plug as well but we do have neutral safety switch okay let's see what else is in here i do have an adapter that's coming in because um the one that i just sold today actually had this plug on it and on this one we have like the round round kind of plug i'm sure it's not too hard to to depend this you know just kind of letters to letters but i'm not an electrical guy i don't like doing electrical stuff so if they sell an adapter then i'm just gonna adapt the thing but um i'm gonna put you guys down for a second this one is a, a lot heavier i will say that a lot lot heavier so we unwrap this and we'll be right back all right check this thing out so we got chrome up here this is our our adapter our hub adapter for our steering wheel it comes with this one factory uh not sure if this one matches our steering wheel but i have an adapter either way hopefully it does we'll just throw it in and we'll be we'll be good but i don't think so i don't remember it having this many holes but that's not a problem this is the bare metal stainless steel version um i think they also had a black and uh, i believe they had a chrome but i like this with the brush the chrome i think it just kind of gives us something else to look at different different tones uh very nice very nice very heavy very very good piece i like it very happy with it uh what else looks like everything is intact all of our man it's all just zip tied together i think we we'll just throw this thing straight up in there uh it does come with new uh, what would you call these new uh levers that's the right word new levers so i think i'm gonna throw this one on because this one takes a spring i think if i do it in there it could spring somewhere else i think i'm gonna try to do it here while i can while i'm looking at it while i'm staring at it uh in here is probably our indicator let me check this out real quick <laughs> yep. So this comes with both. For your low overdrive, but we're running a, a three turbo 350, I believe is in here. But don't quote me on that, but I believe that's what's in there. And uh, I have to keep this one. Because I know we'll eventually be running a different transmission although the 350 is pretty die hard uh i do enjoy an overdrive so let me put a couple of these things together and let's go mount this thing i'll cut you guys back all right that wasn't too difficult um Something to note is this lever, this lever here is string, string, not string, spring, spring loaded. Um, that spring that you've seen that I had in the little bag, you got to put that spring in first. And I kind of banged it up right here. Yeah. I didn't. Boom. Use the right tool for the right job, guys. Do as I say, not as I do. But inside of here, there's a little slot, and uh, that's where the spring goes. So 
the easiest way for me to do that was I used a flathead screwdriver and I stabbed it in between one of the one of the coils on that spring and then kind of fed it in there sideways and then pulled this out and then this lever is beveled on one edge you get it on the front side of that spring and then tilt it back and then line up your hole and put your spring so don't forget the spring that's what springs it back obviously and i would say put this it's like a little um little pin i'd say probably put it from the bottom this way in case you accidentally hit it you're not gonna see that but that's a good thing that i did it so that's a story to tell for another day and then behind here this is just um was hand tight they just throw this in there i think um for you to use but i don't think i'm gonna use that so you take off the take off the nut take this guy out and then behind there is where this turn signal lever goes that's right behind that adapter and then this one right here is for your tilt that one just screws on and then up here you got your indicator two screws and then back here you got your little plastic uh most likely it's, it's going to illuminate i think under it i saw like a little light but that's your little line up here and then as you move this that moves with it can't do it with one hand but you get it you pull this turn that and then that'll click over click 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 so everything looks good this too uh what is this all your your uh hazard lights that's what this is your hazard lights and that just has a little screw in, in the center of that and that's it this is ready to throw in so i will throw this in right now oh you know what i was going to show you guys the steering wheel and also so i can check out if this adapter is going to work i'll just throw this back on there but i don't think it will i've already unboxed this before this is from forever sharp oh what is this guy oh that's for that so somebody's gonna need this one day brand new two four six eight two four six eight nine nine hole and uh, this is the steering wheel that I'm running with. It's from Forever Sharp. I got this as a gift actually on my birthday from my wife. So shout out to the honey for that. There it is. That's the horn button. This is our adapter in here. So I need to throw this, throw this on real quick, real quick like. Yeah, so it's a different adapter. No big deal. We'll throw this adapter on there and we'll get it ready. And uh, mm, this is probably easier to put. Yeah, we'll put the steering wheel after. That way it's already locked in place so I can tighten this nut right here probably easier to get in there right now also without the steering wheel on there so let me do that let's get that in the vehicle stop this for now all right we're back in the truck we got this thing mocked up now i say mocked up because it's not set to position this way because we are missing our our shaft, our inter intermediate shaft, the one that the truck had, um, the bearings up here just really, really just gone, and uh, just nasty looking. We do have a new uh, rag joint. Looks like somebody has hooked this up. 
looks like this is new so maybe this is new too um, I did not put this but it's new or newer for sure but I don't know the length of this shaft so for now I just kind of have it tightened in there a little bit but it's gonna be loosened up and and set to the length but check how it looks our interior is getting put back together it's looking really really nice Went with the new bezel. That's just an Amazon piece. And uh, a little little billet for our lights. Um, I lost this button. I think I broke it actually when I when I was tearing this stuff apart. But we have a new a new knob coming. Uh, new lighter. And then a new a new little ring little bezel thing for the key our stereo from retro sound oh here's a story about the retro sound stereo um, they reached out to me actually for retro sound and they were it looks like they're actually watching the install video which is pretty cool but one thing that they mentioned is that this faceplate was actually built and made for it to be put from the back of the dash so the only part that's actually supposed to come through the dash is just like this little ring right here the little square so that's supposed to just pop through there and all this stuff is supposed to be actually behind the dash and they looked at this and they said well you know what I mean if you like the way it looks then you know go ahead and run it and tell you the truth I mean I like it better like this you know, they did send me an install video of how you're supposed to install the faceplate. And it's exactly like they said, this is actually supposed to be behind. And the little chrome is just supposed to be around the actual, just the face. And and that's it. But I like it like this. So I'm going to run with it. I think it kind of goes with the look that I'm going for. So that's how I installed it. If you want to look up Retro Sound and look for faceplate installation, you'll see what I'm talking about exactly on the other way of installing it, I guess. The proper way. This is how I like it. This is how I did it. If you like the way this looks, then put the faceplate on the front. Now, back to this. I got all of our levers on here now. Everything's nice and tight. Beautiful. I love this piece. Get the brush stainless steel. And uh, we're going to start installing our our hubs here. And get our steering wheel put together and installed. Now, I've never been able to install the horn on these things. I have no idea how to do it. Like, I've seen different videos. and I mean, it looks simple enough. But when I go and actually try to do it myself... I have no idea where stuff goes. So, I don't know. It looks, I don't think we're going to have a horn for now. But maybe when somebody comes through one of these days, I can ask somebody that knows more than me. It's simple enough to take the stand wheel off. And maybe they can connect those wires for me and show me how to do it. Or, or if you guys know how... Uh, comment down below and send me a link to a video where it shows you how to do it. An easy video. There's millions of videos. Send me an easy one. Maybe I'm just overthinking it. But for now, steering wheel, button, on. Let's put it on.